here's an example of good placement of sand to be dried. Now we can put this in either uh, metal containers or plastic containers. But notice here in our small oven, there's lots of airspace. Uh, still lots of airspace around each of these samples, and then nothing down here. So uh, in this case, the sensor, this is the, the way we're measuring how hot it is in here. This is the evacuation uh, area where hot, where hot, moist air is going to leave. The source of the hot air entering the chamber is there. So again, if we have this thing super jam-packed, especially with plastic or metal or metal containers, things that are impervious, um, we will tend to get super hot down here in the bottom of the drying oven, and um, uh, not much, not very hot over here, and that'll tend to make the sensors think that the ambient humidity, ambient temperature is different than it is, and that tends to cause dangerous situations and leads to inefficient drying. So we want to have lots of space around our samples when we're doing driving. If you look in our big oven over here, it's even a greater potential problem since we have more uh, space. So again, nice, good uh, space around each of the samples so air can easily move up and down. Uh, same thing on the second shelf and on the bottom shelf, uh, still uh, not, not so much an issue on the bottom here, but we don't want to have so much stuff out here that um, uh, we're making the system overwork. Also, these samples should go in here mostly dry already, at least air dried, so they're not sopping wet because that'll make the machine have to, the drying oven have to work even hotter. Okay, so I'm going to close the door now so we don't cause any problems. So that's the best way to set our drying ovens up to dry sand for our microplastics or uh, sediment grain size or anything else we're doing with our sediment.